Ghost and the Bungalow by Roxanne Baker. Our house is haunted. Are people haunted? Are spirits destined to walk the earth among the living for some reason? Why do they come back? What is out there beyond our senses? By the time we know the answers, without a doubt, it'll be too late for us to tell anyone. If the technology at our disposal today can help us find some answers, any answers, we must investigate. We must reach out beyond our grasp, just in case. Just in case there is another out there reaching out to find us. When I was six years old, I lived with my family in a small three-room bungalow behind my paternal grandparents in Kentucky. It was little, but we were poor, and my grandparents were helping us out by allowing us to live there. My family consisted of my dad, mom, younger brother, and myself. It was a fun part of my childhood living next door to my grandparents. There were always family members around, and I often had my cousins visiting, and we would play together. Also, my maternal grandmother lived at the top of the hill behind our house. My mom's five younger sisters lived there as well, and they would often visit. In fact, on the hill, of which our house sat at the bottom, lived several family members. This included my great-grandparents and a great-aunt and uncle. My ancestors had settled in that area well over 100 years earlier, so our family lived quite closely to one another. This may all seem nice and cozy, but do not allow the picture I just painted in your mind to be deceptive. You see, this hill where so many members of my family harmoniously lived was very haunted. I'm not sure of the history of the area before my relatives settled there, but legends were told of ghost sightings since before I was born. I never saw a ghost personally there. People I knew had seen ghosts there on that hill. My experiences were just as frightful, though, as I did hear them. Loudly and vengefully, they allowed me to hear them. Those experiences of my youth, I will never forget. Many stories of haunted happenings on the hills started before I was born, as said before. One such story was that of a little woman who would be seen floating around the grounds by different people. My maternal grandmother told the story of when she, her sister, my great aunt Miney, and her brother, my great uncle Freeman, all three saw the little floating woman at the same time. It was early one morning, well before daylight, and the two older sisters were walking with Freeman, the younger sibling, to the outhouse. Freeman would have been around three years old, which would have made my granny, Desi, about thirteen. Mani would have been somewhere around nine years old. Mani was the first to see this little woman floating down the pathway just beyond where they were standing. She called for my granny to look, and it was then Granny and Freeman both saw the apparition. They took off towards the house running, Granny holding Freeman. Somewhere along the way, Granny dropped Freeman on the ground by accident, but kept running. Freeman delirious with fright, kept screaming, Don't leave me, Des! Please don't leave me! When the girls made it back to the porch, my great-grandmother was standing there and staunchly made my grandmother go back and get him. There came a time when it was my great-grandmother's turn to see the little woman. One day, she saw her in the garden behind the house and decided to follow her. My great-grandmother was never afraid of anything. She was a real pioneer woman. She once cut off the tip of her finger while gardening and then sewed it back on herself. She was tough. At any rate, from the garden she followed her down a path past the well house where she veered close to the orchard. Acting as though not to notice my great-grandmother, the little woman floated towards the barn and disappeared. These sightings kept everyone baffled as no one could even imagine who this little woman was and where she came from. There was never a clue given to anyone if she had in fact been someone who had lived there or just someone passing through. Our house, the bungalow, sat not only behind my grandparents' house, but across the garden from my great-grandparents' house. Prior to us moving in, my great-grandmother would say she could see an oil lamp 
moved through the house from her kitchen window. However, the house was empty at the time. That may have been a clue that something was going on, but it was a clue my parents chose to ignore. After all, we needed a place to live, ghost or no ghost. My dad was not a believer in ghost anyway. The rest of us discovered, however, something did exist beyond us, and it knew how to get our attention. My mom made the first discovery of the supernatural. One night, my dad came home late, and my brother and I had already been put to bed. Soon after his late dinner, my dad went to bed as well. Mom stayed up to clean the kitchen, and then she went to bed. She was very tired too, so she left a small bowl of food scraps out, with plans to take them out the next morning to give the wild animals. It was dark outside, so she did not want to venture out so late. Soon after going to bed, she heard noises coming from the kitchen. Her first thought was that our big yellow cat, Morris, was getting into the food scraps. She tried to wake my dad to get him to go check it out, but he would not wake, no matter how hard she nudged him. After giving up on waking him, she decided to go to the kitchen and check it out for herself. So that she would not wake me or my brother, she went through the living room towards the kitchen guided only by the moonlight. Before reaching the kitchen door, she heard what sounded like a large ball bearing drop onto and roll across the kitchen floor. This made her stop in her tracks and grasp the door facings going from the living room into the kitchen. She gazed into the kitchen, which was only lit by the moon, and could not see anything unusual. Suddenly, the kitchen began to shake as though there was an earthquake. Mom stayed clutched to the door facing and hunkered down in the doorway until the shaking stopped. After the few moments of shaking, Mom being all shook up herself, abruptly went back into the bedroom. My brother and I were fast asleep in bed, and our cat, Morris, was curled up at the foot of the bed asleep as well. Oddly, as soon as she reached her bed she shared with Dad and barely moved the blankets, my dad awoke right away and asked what was wrong. A different light on the hauntings began to show when someone who was not a member of the family began to tell of odd occurrences. We had a family friend we called J-Boy. This, as one would expect, was his nickname. J-Boy lived next door to the mechanic garage where my dad worked. He was a teenager, loved hanging out at the garage, and befriended my dad as though he saw him as a big brother. J-Boy came from an exceptionally large family and with many younger brothers and sisters. Just to get away from things, he would sometimes come home with my dad and spend the night. J-Boy was a lot of fun to be around and he would goof off with my brother and I like a big brother would. When he would stay over, he would sleep on the couch in the living room and listen to the 8-track tape player until he went to sleep. One morning at breakfast, J-Boy asked my mom, Why did you wake me up last night to ask if I was asleep? My mom told him that she did no such thing. He said in the middle of the night, the living room overhead light came on. He looked up and saw there was a woman standing there. He could not make out her facial features, but she asked him if he was asleep. After he said yes, he had been, she turned the light off. We teased him for a bit about this lady ghost and the attention she paid him, until a different ghost gave him some more negative attention. We were all hanging out one evening while J-Boy was visiting, everyone except my dad anyway. He was staying late at work. My mom was in the kitchen cleaning, and my brother and I were in the living room with J-Boy. James, my brother, and J-Boy were seated on the couch. I was sitting across the room on the old white rocking chair that belonged to my great-grandfather, George. J-Boy was picking on me relentlessly, as he would if he really were my big brother. I had a book on my lap, reading and trying to ignore him. He kept pestering me mocking me and try to provoke me to anger. Then, a glass of cola on the floor next to my chair lifted and flew across the room, dousing him with the cola. He could not blame me either. At first, he tried. As much as he wanted to blame me, 
and tried with a straight face to say it, he could not. We both saw the cup lift by itself and fly across the room. Was it his ghost lady? Or was it my great-grandpa George not locking the shenanigans? Who knows? It was a ghostly encounter I never forgot, and I doubt he did either. One of the last scary events I can remember was the night of the intense storm. I was at the house with my mom and brother. My dad was staying late at work. A storm blew through and it was a big one. Not long into the storm, our power went out and mom got out all the candlesticks we had. Power was out all over the hill. We looked outside and all we could see was pitch blackness. My brother and I huddled next to Mom on the couch by candlelight, waiting for the storm to pass. Morris, our cat, was curled up nice and snug on Great Grandpa George's rocking chair. All was peaceful and quiet in the house, with only the sounds of rain, thunder, and lightning rumbling outside. We then heard noises coming from the kitchen, although no one was in there. The couch was positioned in a way that we could not see inside the kitchen from where we were. I do not think I would have wanted to anyway. Then, suddenly there was a crash in the kitchen. It sounded as though every pot and pan we had was dumped into the middle of the kitchen floor. Morris arched his back, raising all his hair and letting out an ear-piercing screech. Like a bolt of lightning, he streaked into the bedroom on the opposite side of the house. Where he sat in the rocking chair, he had a direct view into the kitchen. We three just sat clutching each other in horror. Once the power came back on, we looked into the kitchen and there was nothing displaced. Not a pot, nor pan, nor dish was out of place. We could never figure out what had happened. It was only a few weeks later we moved into a different house, closer to the garage where my dad worked. The new house was not haunted either.